Too many people are doing this wrong. Hello, and welcome to Truth Be Told, the channel where the truth will set you free, but first, it just might piss you off. Before I get started, I would ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any new content at the end of the video. If you agree with what is being said, I would ask you to like and comment and share with those around you so that they can uh, get a chance to hear this commentary. I thank you in advance. Okay, let's get into the subject. Too many people are doing this wrong. I know there are a lot of people on the internet talking about relationships. But when I say relationship, I'm speaking about relationships that lead to marriage. Because if you're in a relationship that doesn't lead to marriage, you basically just hooked up for some period of time. Now, some people believe it's the man's fault as to why more people aren't getting married or staying married. And some people believe that it's the woman's fault as to why people aren't getting married or staying married. What I say, I say it's both their fault. So why do I say that? Because too many women today, so-called modern women, are only focused on a man who makes money, usually six figures and above. And too many men are only focused on a woman who fits a certain beauty aesthetic someone considered a nine or a ten so both sides are coming at the relationship with the wrong motivation a motivation that will never work long term why because that man's money may decrease at some point and that woman's looks will most assuredly decline over time let me see if I can give you a practical example of what I mean. Let's use an expensive, beautiful car as the relationship. The woman wants the car because it's worth six figures or more. The man wants the car because it's something to behold. It's beautiful. But because these two only want the car for their own selfish reasons, Neither of them checked to see if the car had an engine and it doesn't. And a car with no engine, no matter how expensive or how beautiful, is no good to anybody. Why? Because there's no driving force. There's no movement, no progress. So with time, that car is going to get old and rusty to the point where it's no longer valuable nor good to look at. It's basically useless. This is how too many people are entering relationships these days. The woman wants a quote unquote high value man and the man wants a quote unquote dime piece. Neither of them seems to put a whole lot of emphasis on character, more specifically good character which in my opinion should be the number one quality of any potential mate. Because I don't care how much money he makes or how fine she is. If that person doesn't have good character, particularly as it pertains to you, then you can be with them. But that quote unquote relationship will only be empty and miserable. Because just like the car with no motor, it may be expensive. It may look good, but without the driving force of that engine, it's not going anywhere. It's going to sit there till time whittles it away to a rusty pile of dust. So let's hear what God has to say. The Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. 
But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother to establish a home with his wife. And the two shall become one flesh so that they are no longer two, but are united as one flesh. Therefore, what God has united and joined together, man must not separate by divorce. This is the problem with most men and women today when it comes to relationships that lead to marriage. Too many men and women today either have no idea how Almighty God instituted marriage or they just don't believe God knows what he's talking about when it comes to marriage. And let me say this before I go further. I wouldn't recommend anyone get married unless they both have a real relationship with Almighty God. I know that may confuse some, it may even anger some, but I'll expound upon that in another video. So, getting back to Mark 10 verses 6 through 8, it is my belief that not enough people recognize the seriousness of a marriage. They don't understand that this is something that was instituted by the Father of all creation, Almighty God. They don't understand that when you recite those marriage vows, you're not only reciting them before your partner and whatever friends and family you invited, you're reciting them in front of Almighty God. So let's take a look at some of the vows that people recite or confess during a wedding ceremony. The person presiding over the wedding ceremony will usually ask, uh, do you take your partner to be your wife or husband to have and to hold from this day forward to honor and keep her or him for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and and to cherish forsaking all others until you are parted by death these or some version of these are the solemn vows that people make to one another in the presence of almighty god and these are the solemn vows that people break on a regular basis every day all over this world this is why i say i wouldn't recommend anyone get married unless they both have a real relationship with the almighty god because when a married couple have a real relationship with almighty god they understand mark 10 verse 8 that says and the two shall become one flesh so that they are no longer two, but are united as one flesh. See, when a couple truly understands that they become one unit, one entity, one flesh, they'll stay together for a lifetime. Why? Because when the two become one, there's no more my money and your money. There's no more my car and your car. There is no more my stuff and your stuff. Everything we possess as a truly married couple, even down to our very bodies, is ours. And everything we do as a married couple is for the benefit of us as a single unit. And no one in their right mind hates themselves. No one in their right mind cheats on themselves. No one in their right mind beats on themselves. You don't leave yourself because you got sick, lost a job, or fallen on hard times. People who truly understand that they become one unit will support each other, work together, and willingly compromise with one another to make sure their marriage stays strong because they see their partner as themselves. But again, it takes both parties to have this mindset. And in my opinion, the only way to truly get to that level of agreement, that level of oneness and keep it throughout a lifetime 
is for both parties to understand and be focused on Almighty God as their source and the one they will ultimately have to answer to at the end of their lives. The Bible says in Malachi 2 verse 16, For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong and violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore keep watch on your spirit, so that you do not deal treacherously with your wife. This happens way too often in too many marriages. Over time, one or both parties allow the issues of life, be it job, money, another man or another woman, to creep into their relationship. They lose focus and start thinking the grass is greener on the other side. And before long, they've forgotten what made them fall in love in the first place. And before I sign off, let me say something about the grass on the other side. Guess what? It's not greener. It may be a different type of grass. But it's still grass. You still have to fertilize it. You still got to mow it if you want it to be a healthy lawn. And if you can do that for the new lawn, i.e. the new relationship, you could have continued to do it for the old lawn, the, the lawn you just left. Okay, there it is. I hope that made sense. So in part two, I'll get into the sometimes controversial subject of order within a marriage. This is my book, Cross Your Heart and Hope to Live. You can find commentary about some of the things I talk about on this channel in this book. You can download the ebook or order a hard copy on Amazon.com. The link is here, but it's also in the description. God bless you all. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and hit that notification bell. This has been Truth Be Told. It's a blessing to talk to you. And I thank you for listening.